back with the NHRA Full Throttle Drag Racing Series. Look at lane two and four. Jeff Dio blows the body off first, and then Matt Hagen just disintegrates the body. still moved up to ninth. Well, as you see Matt Hagen trying to get out of there. Obviously, he was stunned a little bit uh, from that huge explosion. I can relate to. I was uh, 1983. I had one similar to that, and I was basically out of it until they put me in the ambulance to take me to the hospital. I think he's going to be a little more stunned when he actually sees the videotape where the car is way up in the air. And there it is, and now getting ready to be drugged back to the pits. Let's go to Dave Reed. Well, and you can see what's left of that diehard cars being unloaded in the pits right now. Pretty traumatic what we're looking at here. As far as Matt Hagen goes, he's been taken to the infield uh, fan care area here underneath one of the grandstands. I didn't get a chance to talk with one of the ambulance drivers. They're just looking him over. It's all precautionary. Doesn't sound like anything major, but we will be certainly waiting to talk with Matt Hagen when he gets out in just a little bit. John Kernan. And Dave, I'm with Jeff Deal, and uh, Jeff, just a spectacular looking incident right there. You said you've never had the body fly off the car like that, but first of all, you are okay, but what was that experience like? Oh, uh, it's, you know, it's not a fun one to have, but they happen out here, you know, you don't expect it. It was kind of running along and shook. I drove it through the shake, and it, you know, it's kind of hard to get your perception of what's going on, but I guess a hole was out, ended up throwing the rods out, blowing the body off, but I mean, uh, safety stuff did its job. I'm standing here I mean we just got a lot of work ahead of us how much work do you have do you have another body to put on it can the body be repaired I haven't been able to see it it was way down the track for me yeah I, I, that was the first thing I was acting asking we have all the stuff to fix this but I don't have another body I'm kind of independent but we'll get a body on this thing one way or another we'll take we'll find something in the parking lot turn into a funny car body. all right best of luck to you one moment he was driving a hard top and then Paul it became a convertible and one very loud noise. Two of them, actually. There's the body. Actually looks in fairly good shape, but of course, you, that distance, you can't tell how many cracks and everything are in it. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty good. It looked like it would be something they could definitely repair, but they won't know until they try to put it back on the chassis, obviously. Grab a couple rolls of duct tape, huh? Yeah, but then they're done that. The crew, of course, uh, they're while they're putting it in position or trying to evaluate what work they have to do now. And Dave Reef, what's Matt Hagen's status? Well, fresh out of the fan care center, you can see he's uh, alive and doing fine for the most part, but you can see some very obvious signs of the impact that you just took. Talk about it. I'd say it was a pretty bad boom out there. Uh, you know, I felt it start to lay over, and before I could get my foot out of it, it grenaded. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of longing for the ride. I seen Dell over to the left of me, and I was trying to keep it away from him. But, you know, it was just a lot going on. And, uh, you know, just I, it hit my hand so hard, I just had to check to make sure all my fingers were there. And, uh, you know, once I figured that out, and then I seen the blood pouring out of my, out of my helmet there, covering my shield up with blood, I said, man, it's not going to be real good. But uh, thank goodness it's just a couple nicks and stuff. And we'll get this diehard car back out there and run and make another qualifying lap. How's the head? Any any issues there? I got a pretty thick head. I think it'll be all right. Any big boomers like that before? Or is that the biggest I, one I ever? I knocked the body off, but I'd say that's pretty uh, pretty big for me right now. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, these uh, these cars are, uh, you know, they're fast and dangerous, but, you know, we love to drive them. We're going to get back in them, and uh, we're going to have some more fun today. Do you have any idea what happened? You can see the cut above your eye there inside your on your forehead there. Obviously, the visor had to come up. I don't know. I think maybe it whipped me so hard forward that my helmet might have come down and, and, and you know, nicked me or the visor might have come up. But what I could see was the visor was down because uh, the blood was covered. You know, the visor was covered in blood pretty good, so it was making it even, even harder to see. But, uh, you know, it, it, like I said, I think all the safety stuff did exactly what it was supposed to, and I'm uh, just grateful that it, it, everything worked the way it was supposed to. You know what the crazy thing is? This guy's going to get in the car and do it again. Yeah, but you're going to have fun. Those head wounds do tend to bleed a lot. And... 
That can be very, very scary. Can you imagine what that was like for him uh, and how casual he is now? I absolutely can. I mean, it's a huge concussion like that, and you know, a lot of time, and you know, you can't see because you know, basically the oil from the engine explosion, and everything will will cover the visor even if it doesn't blow it up. But obviously, a lot of pieces got in there, and uh, he rode her out, did a good job.